something to do with Google Chrome. Right, let's have a look. We're doing an experiment here to see what's wrong with the sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Just trying to get it back again. View channel for. That's not it. You are part of an experiment now. <laughs> right. Part of an experiment, yeah. Part of an experiment, yeah. Still rubbish. The it must be something to do with this computer. Uh, Lauren. It's my computer, it must be. Lauren. Yeah. I do have to leave at nine o'clock, so you know. Okay, okay. So, it might be best to, if you want to sort it later, so we can have more time to talk, you know. Yeah, as I say, we, I have to test it with someone on. If you want to sort it later, so we can. And as I say, they, they're not, it's just a complete waste of time. But yeah, I think. It's, it, it's good enough to do a quick interview anyway, yeah. but it's a really annoying, squeaky thing. And you know, and it's not really fair on the audio. But this is the problem with Restream, they don't fix anything. <laughs> you know, they, they take your money and they don't fix anything, so, which is typical. Right. Right. Just quickly want to... Can you hear it on your end? No, my, uh, my end is actually fine, yeah. Okay, so now I'm just going to check on here. What's the time? Oh, it's half eight. Okay, well, we get half an hour, right? It could be because the mobile is too close to the phone, the uh, computer. It's not that bad on here. Okay, right. So it's lovely to have you back, and I, I just want to. Can you hear me? <laughs> We've got Manuel Cangos. Uh, yesterday was hey a very guys. exciting interview. Um, I had an interview with um, Joey Wells, um, who is the guy who was with um, Bill Haley. Oh, we talked about this. You don't know who. See you later, alligator. You don't know who that is. Do you? Oh, my God, you don't know. <laughs> You're too young. And we had this conversation before. Yeah, Gen Z generation, so probably but not. Your parents must know who Bill Haley and the comic. No, no, actually, because they're from Bulgaria, so they don't know any culture here in England. <laughs> but truly, but did they not? Did they not dance rock and roll when they were younger? Nah, not at all. No. Nah. Actually, no, no, no. They do know the bangers. They might know. Yeah. But that was Bill Haley and the Comets. So, um, and you do know that I'm on. I'm oh, on, yeah, yeah. I thought uh, of something else. Yeah, yeah. They, they probably heard of it. It feels like a big banger. Yeah. Anyway. Well, he was. They were the most famous rock band in the sixties ever. So. In yeah. the 60s? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm, not sure. I'm not sure if they knew it then. Yeah. Right. Okay. But you see, this is the age gap thing, which I, but anyway, I interviewed him mm. and uh, he was brilliant. It was brilliant. Uh, quick oh, wow. Him. You actually interviewed him. That's big. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. he, he loves, he loves uh, the song. It's on here, you know, mm. um, but getting back to, I just want to talk to you about your Christmas. How was your Christmas? Because um, it, it would be nice to hear someone, you know, did you did you celebrate it with Vlad? Oh, it's Vlad's birthday, isn't it, today? Oh, yeah, it is Vlad's birthday, yeah. Oh, you're not together? You know, oh, no, we can't, we can't be together. tier four, you know. Oh, I thought you were in, oh, I thought you lived near each other. Yeah, we do, but tier four. And um, 
Uh, I don't know anything about that. I don't know about it. I don't understand it. Oh, tier four is just if you actually visit other people, you're in risk of uh, uh, fighting. Catching or something that doesn't exist. Yeah. Catching some, some, some fists at least. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But other than that, so Christmas was actually yeah. very chill. You know, you said your Christmas was <laughs> just you alone with a computer, like any yeah, other day. Yeah. It was empty. It was normal. It was. Yeah, it was Martin came over, gave still. me a dinner, and then he went. That was it. The whole. Oh yeah, it, was, was it wasn't anything that. spectacular at all. Nothing, so nothing. the Christmas for me was the yeah. same, except I'm grateful that I was with my mum and dad. So we yeah. had the exact thing. However, we did yes. have a dinner. We sat around the table, and then me and my dad watched uh, the Hobbit on our TV. So <laughs> it was a. It was a a cinema night but overall it was a lazy lazy unproductive day but it was yeah. chill it was chill yeah. so that's yeah. how mine was yeah that was nice did you you know in mexico my friend yasmin mm. uh, is, is uh she went to church on friday night mm. i'm getting confused with the days christmas eve what today's sunday isn't it you see i completely yeah. have it i haven't got a clue what day it is sunday yeah i'm completely it's so confusing Especially because my also my body clock is upside down, inside out because I work. Mm. Um, I'll be working now, streaming probably till about seven, eight a.m. in the morning. Then I go to bed. Uh, if sometimes I go to bed, sometimes I don't. I, I haven't got a clue what day it is. I don't because you know. And so you know, Christmas. Um, I, mm. I, I don't know for some reason I keep thinking it was Friday night. Was it Friday night? Christmas Eve. Was Friday? Yes. Night, yes. No, no. Today's is today Sunday. <laughs> Sorry. I'm yeah. Right. right. So Boxing Day so, was Saturday. So Friday. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Christmas Eve is Thursday. Yeah, you're right. It was Thursday. Yeah, that makes more sense, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Even I was confused. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about. Any advice? Because as I said, you're way beyond your years in wisdom. And uh, a lot of us are struggling at the moment, myself included, or, well, because we can't get our loved ones and our friends to even listen to us. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about what, what it is because we'll get cut off because we're not living in a, a democracy anymore. This is not a free world at the moment. But so what I want to talk to you is about, first of all your your family your parents are they are they open minded enough to understand what's really going on in the world or because I know you are and I know Vlad are because we have these big conversations and we know mm -hmm. um, but what about your parents I know that they have a very strong religious belief like yourself that's true mm -hmm. isn't it because you said that mm -hmm. in the interview you did um, but. Do you have any struggle at all with any members of your family or your friends? That's Definitely. the first question. Yes, well, and then the second question is how do you stay sane? <laughs> right, okay, so, so I'm going to pin you. I'm taking myself off. So these are great questions, Laura. And the first one is short and sweet 100%. Um, 100% everyone in my family is closed minded, but not in the arrogant sense, in the sense that every single one in my family has such a strong will, it is impossible almost to convince them of anything that is foreign information to them. What they must do, and this is my older brother, my mum and my father, they must if they are willing to believe it, go and find it out for themselves in order to accept it. And I am exactly the same. That is why in my, our family is very difficult. We have a lot of fights in a good way. Like um, uh, we're very, imagine four people of, that make up a family completely opinionated as each other and strong-willed leaders. Put that all in one house and all you will have is people taking opposite sides <laughs> You know, so that's my family. So yeah, definitely, you know, they have to find the information for themselves. Your mic is muted, by the way. That must be very difficult for you, Manuel. Um, uh, well, because you, you're living with them and, you know, I'm on my own, so um, I don't have to struggle that way with anybody. I'm, and I, as I say, I'm continuously on WhatsApp with my sister now 
in Israel and it's 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 breaking my heart because she she's just won't listen. I mean I was trying to tell her about China. Again, China's a country, I'm allowed to say that word. I was trying to explain to her because I think a lot every, nearly everyone you talk to, even last year, year before, I remember sitting down to the Christmas table and my in-laws were talking about, you know, threats from there. And everybody knows it. And yet she's making fun of me and saying, oh, when they come to get you, um, you know, make sure that this, you know, and it's very demeaning. And it's yes, really, quite insensitive. Not just demeaning, but I keep saying, I warned my sister years and years ago to be careful with her daughters when they brought out a certain needle, okay, mm -hmm. for young women. I said to her, don't give it to them, please. I know my intuition is so strong. I've done my research. I've been into this stuff for 20 years. I, I know I've researched and don't give it to them because they won't be able to have children. Mm -hmm. Guess what happens? Not one of them can have a child. And so she gets back to me and she says, um, and I said to her, you didn't listen, did you? And, and why? Surely after something so important, nothing. She said, oh, oh, me and my friends, we all know the truth and, you know, yada, 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 yeah. and, and we're not listening. And and your heart just goes, oh, my God, Manuel, it's like whooshed. This is my sister. I only have one blood sister. That's it. Mom and dad are gone. Everyone. Mm -hmm. so, this is really hard. Oh, I'm really sorry. We're only starting to talk again after five years now of not having any communication whatsoever because of the way things were when my dad died. And and I'm trying to just, well, basically try to stop her from getting sick. She's already had cancer and pneumonia. She's had a lot of issues. And I said to her, you're, you're, you're vulnerable. But they, they just won't listen. And to me, that's... You know, everyone I talk to lately um, are saying that their families won't listen. And it's like you're putting it in their face, Emmanuel. You're putting it in their face. Just look, just like I say, just have a look, you know. Okay, you may never have had, um, as I said, chocolate ice cream, but you might like it <laughs> if you taste it. Mm. The body might say, you know, people used to say, say um, oh, I hate salads. Have you even tasted what a salad tastes like? I I ordered an organic box. I'm so grateful from Abel and Cole. They're a company that bring organic food to the door. And they brought fennel and beetroots and, and tomatoes and all organic. And I cut it all up with lemon and salt. And I made this delicious salad. And I, saw, and I ate it and I thought to myself, people would rather eat a pie with, you know, that has got no nutrients. They, they don't know what a salad is, a real salad, like a mm. Mediterranean, you know what a Mediterranean salad is. In Bulgaria, do you have salads? I mean, that's something, you know, nice. Do you make those nice big salads? Oh, yes, of course. You know what I mean? And you don't know what it takes. You won't want chocolate again. You want a salad. You would choose. And yet they won't even try it. Like try a salad. Try that like Martin's the same. Martin is a worry. He's lost so much weight. Mm. And, and he won't listen. And just when he was living here, salads and smoothies and God, I'm scared. Manuel, I'm scared. I am really scared. I'm scared that we're going to be saying goodbye to a lot of people. As I said, I have to be careful how I say this. But it, and I, yes, I believe in God. I believe in love. I believe that we are here. And, it, and in a situation, you do have casualties. But because it's all about what's inside of you. If your body is a temple, your body, you've been given this in order to come here and, and do a job. And you should be grateful for this because it worked so hard. It worked so hard. I mean, it's 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 a perfect, incredible, intelligent machine, isn't it? 
Mm. You have to look after it the same way as you look after your car. You will oil your car, you will give your car water, you will put beautiful um, things that it needs, you'll MOT it, whatever. Why do you think that this is any different? But people are just not getting it. And, and the, the only answer they need is look, see this, like the same way as if you're MOTing your car. If you're putting good petrol into it, it needs petrol, it needs water. It needs, you know, or else it won't go. It needs fixing here, there, and if it creaks. This <laughs> is, this is. That's a good analogy, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Why are they so, you know, it's like, oh, my car, my car. But why can't they see, you know, when they're at, when you, when you get a diagnosis, like years and years ago, um, I had a blood test. And I remember when I, my body suddenly became important because I thought I was sick, yeah? And then, so, oh my God, oh my God, my body is important now. Mm. But is that what's going to happen to some of these people? Is that they're going to have to be brought down to their knees, literally, to see that this thing, if you don't look after this thing, then you can't be here anymore. Anyway, I'm talking a lot because I'm very emotional about this and I, I'm, I'm very I'm emotional sure. about this. It's, it's my I've done years and years of research, and I know what works and what doesn't. Mm. And, when, and I never ever thought we'd get to a point where I would have to see my loved ones. I mean, those that are left. This is just my sister and my nieces now. Mm -hmm. Choose a different direction, even though history has already shown us. Again, that's another thing, Emmanuel. I'm a Jew. We're all Jewish. We all grew up with what happened in the Second World War. It's not, it happened. Mm -hmm. You can't deny it. So why don't they think it could happen again? Why? Uh, this is what gets to me as well. Is this, The minute this started, I knew. And I thought, oh, hang on a second. It's happening again. So anyway, I'm, I'm very emotional about it. And I need you to come in with your wisdom and tell me how do we stay sane? Apart from eating healthy, drinking water, and not watching the news anymore, just literally cut that thing out and watch TV on TV. We need to give people, if there's anyone on here that is questioning, you know, they took away Christmas. Mm. The, the, this is something nefarious and cruel now, all right? You need to start thinking a little bit differently outside that box. So, in a minute, I'll give you a chance to talk. So, oh, no, no, person, no. What, what would you say? I mean, I know your religion keeps you strong, and Jesus taught us everything. I mean, I, I, I study Jesus. I study A Course in Miracles. Jesus tells you to love yourself first, because you cannot love anyone until you love yourself, and because we're all connected anyway it bounces back on you to so what you give, you receive. But he always told you to that you are your own doctor. You are your own healer. You, you don't go out there and create idols and look at other people and say, fix me. And now we're at the precipice, big world, Lauren, where you can't go and ask someone to fix you, not emotionally, and not physically because they don't know what they're doing or they don't care. You have to do it yourself through changing your diet, your meditation, your attitude, doing what you love. Anyway, I'll shut up now because I want your wisdom. So, because I'm struggling with it and, and I know a lot of pain is coming and there's not much I can do about it, you know, because I mean, I'm, I'm human and the grief is going to be intense, unbearable, intense pain. And I'm scared, I must admit, that part. So I'm staying in the moment, in the now. So what do you do, Manuel? I'm going to well, mute myself now, right? Because I won't stop to... First of all, Lauren, thank you so much for sharing all of that. It's clear that you know what you're talking about. And you're talking about real things that people don't talk about. No wonder you have so many people coming at you. This because people love... And by people, I mean... Um, 
the world, let's say, loves darkness. The Bible talks about the people, Lauren, who love darkness so much they fled from the light, from the truth. So when they hear people sharing the truth, they must censor them. Why? Because they love darkness. So no wonder, um, no wonder, uh, you know, people are coming at you like this. Now, your question is, hi, um, hi, Cara. I hope I'm saying your name right as well. And hello, Mark as well. Uh, thank you guys for engaging. I know Mark from uh, last time as well. So it's good to see you engaging once more. So otherwise, Lauren, your question is, how do I stay sane? In other words, how do I have peace? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I have incredible peace in the midst of everything. For me, I don't experience lockdown. I don't experience social distancing. I don't experience COVID-19. I live a transcendent. I don't want to sound overly spiritual because it's not. It's actually practical. I live an amazing, peaceful life. Why? I'll give you the antidote which you can apply right now. And I'm not even going to lie to you. The antidote is the word of God. Don't let that sound overly spiritual to you because it's really not. The word of God, which is the Bible, it's not even about religion. Forget religion. Just the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, which has been written down, is the Bible. And guess what it says? Listen to this. It's very interesting. The Bible says, I, God talking, will keep you in perfect peace if you stay your mind on me. Did you catch it? I'll rephrase. It says, if you stay your mind on God, meditating on him, he will keep you in perfect peace. That's what the Bible says. Now, the answer to all of life's questions, challenges and struggles is God. If that is true, follow me here. If that is true, then in the word of God, which is his thoughts, his opinions, his plans, his heart, his personality, in the word of God, which is the Bible, are all the answers to life's problems. Now, Here's the answer to real anxiety. People say, I'm so anxious. I don't want to be anxious. But they don't do what God said they should do. Then they wonder why they're anxious. God simply said, stay your mind on me and I am faithful to keep you in perfect peace. If you want peace, seek God. If you want peace consistently, Stay your mind in God. Get a relationship with him through his word and he will keep you in peace. And that's the peace I have. I can testify of it. It's real. And I'm not talking to you just about tranquility. It's deeper than that. Listen to me. The peace that God gives you when you stay your mind on him is something spiritual. It's where it's peace indescribable. You can't explain it. It's so good and deep. That's what I live. So I'm not stressed. I'm not anxious. <laughs> I live a peaceful life. Why? Because I'm rooted and grounded in the peace of God. So that's the antidote. That's the remedy. If you don't like hearing this, then that is a problem. Because anything else you seek that gives you momentary peace will only give it to you for the moment, but will never, ever, ever be the peace which your heart is yearning for, which is the only peace that God brings. I'll conclude with this. Wow. Every, every single person so in this world, God created every single person on this planet with a hole in their soul. Now that hole is only meant to be filled with God himself, with his love, with his agape love, the one that transcends scientific understanding and knowledge. Mm -hmm. However, people refuse God. You see, like I said earlier, they love the darkness too much. They ran to the darkness away from the light and they started trying to fill that hole, which is the void in every single heart with things like pleasure, money, relationships, 
anything uh, uh, possessions anything else other than god yet nothing can ever fill it that's why you have celebrities killing themselves because they have everything this world has to offer but nothing fulfilled the god shaped void in their heart that is why you could be the poorest man on earth god fulfills his and satisfies and he will feel like the richest man when that happens if you're the richest man on earth that void will only be satisfied with Jesus. That is why the only answer to any single problem you have is God. Okay. I'm going to come back in there a second. Of course. Thank you. I'm done, I'm done as well. You, absolutely stunning. Um, I'm in awe of you, you know, the way you speak and the things you say. Um, um, of I, I totally agree with you uh, until you said uh, because to me jesus is, is a teacher okay but i don't want to get into it doesn't matter what you believe if if it works for you and it's coming from the heart and from love to me god is love right and so when you say i believe everything you say and uh because i know that nothing you know nothing it doesn't matter what you have if you have everything people are still not satisfied because we have this void in us and um, now it's interesting what you said that we were born with this void you see again i don't believe that i um um i believe certain people like for myself for example i lost my brother in the womb so i i was born like a half a person when i came out i came out like half <laughs> and then we go through hell we go through all these things that happen to us um i'm not sure if i necessarily believe that we come here with the void um because i think that because i'm not sure you know because it's, it's a big discussion but what i'm interested in more than anything is to help humans like myself and like a lot of other people to stay in that space where i'm being evicted right and the mind has a field day with that because i'm going to be on the street you know um at the end of january as far as it's concerned there's me and pinsonelli with their little bags you know the cats and there's me and we're sitting in the car because we've got no home right because that's what the mind and the eyes can see that's it however when i look inside this is why i call this song heart vision the piece of music that is was divinely created and which is starting to fly a little bit on its own because you have to look inside from the heart now the heart or love or god whatever you call it a power that is greater than me, all right? That's how I see it. Something that is pure and loving and only wants what's good for me, what's good for us, yeah? That's, to me, it is part of the equation. Doesn't want me to be unhappy. So when I tap into that, it will say to me, Lauren, what day is it today? And I will say, today is, you have to be like a child, you have to, you have to direct it like a child, the mind. And it, and you will say, well, today is the 28th of January, I think. 27th of uh, January. Yeah, 27th, yeah. 27th, even better. Thank you. And then you can say, thank you, thank you. Okay, today is the 27th of December 2020. When are you supposed to be evicted? Or oh, maybe the end of January, because it hasn't even gone to court yet. Mm. And then you can come back and say, oh, okay, there's nothing to be scared of. Nothing. Because you are still in the 27th of December, 2020. And when you say, you know, when you said, you said to me, Lauren, in the new year, it's a long time, 2021. The mind sees it again. Oh, not till the end of January 2021. Oh my God, that's a different ball game altogether. You don't have anything to worry about. Right, let's have a look at what you can do today 
to get through the day. And that's it. One day at a time. It's mm. based on the 12 steps. You know, that was, I'd say my salvation came. But I had an eating disorder, the void, yeah? And let's face it, when we do encounters, it, we're filling the void all the time. They're living in the void, all the characters. I don't know one human that doesn't have a little bit of a void. I mean, let's face it, Manuel, if they took away your home, uh, if they threw you on the streets and they took away everything, your family, your parents, oh, you would feel it. Come on. You would feel Honestly, it. honestly, I know what you're talking about. I can feel anything, but that void has already been fulfilled in me forever and it can never be taken away. So you can take every single possession I have away of me, everything, but you can never take away the thing that has filled my heart, which is my faith. Okay, do you think it's because you were born into it? That you were literally... Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great question. I'll answer it very clearly and quickly. 100% no. Why? Because there's a lot of celebrities that have been brought up the same way I have, but look at them now. They're completely the opposite. So it's a choice a person has to make whether to follow God or not. It is the parent's responsibility to bring them and raise them correctly in the truth. And then once the kid is of age, they must make a choice whether to live in the truth or to follow darkness. Right. So and that was close. I have lived in darkness, but then God helped sorry. me choose the right way. Thank you. Sorry. Because, again, I'm, I like to challenge people. Of course. You're, you're saying to me, if um, overnight, I'm just giving you an example, mm. your mom and dad said, we don't want anything to do with you. Yeah. I'm just giving you something. This is what happened to me, right? No, this is good. Yeah. My dad died and the whole family cut me off because I didn't like them euthanizing dad. I didn't agree with it. I didn't want anything to do with it. All I did was try to bring him back and love him. And so he died the minute I left. Okay, oh, wow. without going into, um, they took they took his water away from him, and I don't, you know, with, but what I'm saying to you, okay, I I've forgiven everyone. It's not, I I know why it all happened, and Dad is very happy now, you know, it's, it, Dad, <laughs> it's all gone. But what I'm saying to you mm. is a human, and humans make mistakes, and that's why I'm able to forgive because mm. humans make mistakes that they are anything but perfect. But yeah. what, what I'm saying to you, Manuel, right, mm. here's a scenario. I, I don't believe for one minute that you can actually put yourself into a situation where overnight your mum and dad say, that's it, we don't love you anymore, get out. We don't want you at all, right? Suddenly it's like this huge betrayal because you're human, okay? You have an ego, you have a mind. And because there are people that are going through it and I'm, I'm the kind of person I... I I have to, I have a lot of empathy for everybody now. And I will mm. always say to people that I will never, I will always forgive people, not unless they've done something, which I'm, I'm not going to go into it with children or innocence or whatever, because to me that is, you've gone way beyond, you know? But I'm mm. talking about if, if everything was taken away from you in one day, you suddenly were homeless. You had no work. Even the people at the church didn't want to know you. Come on. You're not Jesus. None of us is Jesus. And Buddha and Jesus went through a lot of suffering. Mm. Jesus on that, you know, whether, he, again, I'm not getting into religion. I'd like to think that Jesus was so, his mind was so powerful that he got over pain. So he got past pain, yeah, when he was on. When he was no, 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 no. Actually, he experienced every bit of pain. Yeah, yeah that's, until that's you got cool. past it, because the minute you experience it, you get past it. The minute you feel, you can heal. But anyway, I don't want to go into that too much. What I'm saying to you... I understand the know, scenario, yeah, yeah. Yeah? He yeah, yeah. Have, he knew everything. Death no, no, knew I know exactly everything. what I would do. All oh, right, okay. So I'm giving you a scenario hmm. where even Jesus screamed at God and said, why are you doing this to me? Okay, and, oh. and Buddha went through hell um, yeah. and didn't become the Buddha we knew and loved until he found his balance. And it took years in the desert, you know, of suffering and everything. He had to go through loads of different stages of addictions and, you know, we are human. <laughs> yeah, we're still human. We still 
have an ego and we have mm. a mind and we have character defects now i cannot believe for one minute that you don't have any character defects because oh i have loads being. i have loads good well i'm not saying that good well so I, because i am want to represent that person who has lost everything boom all in one go and that happens now mm. we've got people like you like uh, we had victor frankl he was in a concentration camp and oh, it's wow. the beauty you love it it's called man's um guys what's the name of victor frankl's book come on guys um he was in a concentration camp he was a young man and he saw the beauty in everything man's uh, um existence uh, something about man. man's search for meaning thank you something like that have you got it on there i have on google, google. yeah now he was a saint because he was able to look beyond everything and he survived the concentration camp now you're saying he was your he was very young and he lost everything they took everything they took his family job i mean if you look at job in the bible right to yep. me all of this is a metaphor they take it on god took it all because he was too attached to everything with attachments and the mind and possessions and then he gave it back to him when he, he was a in a different vibration so he could love everything you know he, g he gave him everything back once he realized the truth so anyway i still mm. do not believe that anyone on apart from well i don't know maybe you're on the consciousness of victor franco where he survived through a concentration camp now if anyone can survive through a concentration camp and come out and have love for everyone even the nuts <laughs> everything he found beauty in everything he'd get up and he would see the beautiful sunset over the concentration camp it, instead everybody else would be screaming and crying and, and and thinking about the fear it very similar very similar mm. to what we're going through <laughs> i get up in the morning wow i've got moving on tv i've got you guys you know i'm not going to sit there crying and be miserable because i'm doing what i love mm. it's love it's pure love you took away the internet from me that would be a bit of a problem for me now okay because that is really my only contact but i'm sure that the spirit would somehow figure it out yeah mm. so okay i'm coming back to you now and again because i know there'll be people on here that are saying you 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 haven't got a clue how we live you know you're, you're aloof and they'll get angry with you so you tell me what would happen say that day no home literally overnight no no time to get used to it and the mind needs time to get used to things we are wounded to awaken to god so our hearts open to the light thank you sweetheart beautiful i don't know how you can cope with bbd without meds <laughs> well because it doesn't exist sweetheart it's a complex needs disorder and every single person is walking around i am shocked i have post-traumatic stress like the rest of us okay and because i do what i love and i do what i love and that's the answer but that's me if you took away the internet and the phone from me now and martin couldn't get here um and we're, we're locked down and yes the only way i could survive is i'd go into meditation and i would stay in that moment and i'd find something to be grateful for if i was in a warm house mm. <laughs> in the winter now if you put me on the streets in the cold i won't make it this this thing won't make it i'm not talking about what's inside me mm. this will not make it in the cold in the streets in england without any it won't make it they will i will fall apart and they'll lock me up i know because unfortunately this thing doesn't survive very well it's got issues with temperature and mm -hmm. you know so you and, and because I'm older and I'm a woman, unfortunately, there are differences. Okay, so I, I'm saying from the point of view of someone, and I've had this discussion with people where they say, oh, money is nothing. Yeah, it's, it's nothing until you're on the streets and you need a home. It's nothing until you want to um, go to a dentist and you can't because you don't have it. People have nothing, Manuel. 
sometimes. So coming back to you, Sweer, what would you, how would you cope with it? Because I'm going to shut up now because I'm very passionate and I'm here to teach. Mm. And I'm here to give you the questions that nobody else will give you. Mm. And you'll be tested the same way as Jesus and the same way as we, everybody gets tested. But will you crucify yeah. yourself or will you find a way out of it? Okay. I'm yeah. going to mute myself and see what you say. Thank you so much. These to... are fantastic and very interesting questions and I'm loving them. So I came up with an answer while listening to you in my mind. So obviously, first of all, I'd be very angry and very confused. Very tremendously. Um, but I believe I would not easily. It would be very challenging, but I'll get over that. Why? Because of my faith is the only reason. So getting over that homeless nothing left i would find a way to get food by begging in front of a supermarket in the meantime i would get enough money to get my hands on a bible on the word of god and then what i would do i would repeat the begging process for sustainability for life for living literally and i would keep chewing the word of god every single day from the bible reading 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 and i know my life will change eventually because the word of god makes you what it talks about when you receive it it causes you to become prosperous it was, it when you talk, what can you tell us is that the lord's prayer no 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 no, no. Is the word because the word of god you know as i know from the bible uh, uh, is saying I am, I am then, I am now, and I am everything. I am forever. Jehovah means, is the combination of I was, I will be, and I am. Okay? So that's what Jehovah means in Hebrew. Jehovah. You're not supposed to say it because they used to stone you. And I, you know what my mother said? Don't say it, don't say it, you'll get punished. I'm not, I'm not, I'm serious. You mustn't say the word. You mustn't say wow. the word. You mustn't say the word Elohim. You have oh, to say Elohim because they put all this superstitious and rubbish into you to frighten you, honestly. So, okay. So what to you, because to me, and um, this is, you know, to me, this is very interesting because it means that you don't have attachments. You don't have the same attachments as most people do. But anyway, what, what is your word to God? Because I'm going to ask you about attachments at the moment. After so this. very clearly and quickly, the word of God is the word of God. So the Bible is the collection inspired by God, chosen by God for the living scriptures, which is the word of God. The only word of God to ever exist, all documented in this book called the Bible, which literally means book. So the word of God is nothing else meaning, let's say. It's literally the word of God. What is a word? If I'm speaking to you right now, you're hearing the word of Emmanuel, let's say. But it's not really my words because I'm speaking opinions which are other people. Most of my opinions are God's. But the point is the word of God is the word of God. Spoken or written, it's all written down in this Bible. Now, why? Uh, if, this, if this book which I call the word of God is dead. I'm just wasting my time chewing it and taking the information it is. But here's what the Bible says. It says that the word of God written here is living and active. It is powerful and quick, so sharp that it divides soul and spirit, joints and marrow. And it says it, the word of God is also a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So you see, the word of God is actually laced with spiritual energy. It is life. So when you take it in, it is spirit. These are the words of Jesus Christ. Listen, he said this. He said, the words I speak to you are spirit and truth. Jesus himself said that the words he speaks, which is the word of God, is spirit. So it is not ordinary, carnal physical information like you would read on other books it is actually real and active no wonder when jesus said heal to a blind person he said heal and by speaking 
the blind eyes actually opened and the person who was born blind saw for the first time. How? Through words. Why? Because the word of God is what? Living and active and powerful. So okay. that is why. Uh, so, so the word of God to me is the word of God. Thank you. So what, what you're seeing, basically what, what I feel is when he said heal to that human being, he told them he only saw them healed. He saw the potential. That's all he saw. He never saw anything else but love and perfect health. So that body or the way, well, because he was so advanced, it's a bit like people can heal each other. I totally believe it. We have got the capacity to heal each other. A mother, like a child, when a child falls over, the child, if they're lucky to have a good mum, that mum will hold them and they will strike, they will stroke, the, the, the pain will go away. Now, I had an aunt, she was my favourite aunt, and whenever I had a, I remember I had a headache or whatever, I would sit on her lap and she would touch my head without even knowing what she was doing. She was a very religious Jew, um, but she didn't know what she was doing. And these days we have healing, we know you can have spiritual healing or whatever. Um, that's another big discussion. I'm not mm. going to go into that new age stuff. But what I'm saying is my aunt would literally put her hand on my head and the headache would go. Yeah? The mind is so powerful. Oh, and yes. I have healed so many things. I never had an operation for my leg. Wow. I healed it by closing my eyes and I saw doctors mm. who came to me from up there, real doctors, and they went into my knee and they healed my knee. I'm not kidding you. You see, we have the, this is what Jesus taught you. You can do anything. So he's, so, wow. when, so what I do, Manuel, what you do and what I do is when someone is low or if they're not feeling too good, you, uh, this example is I learned this through A Course in Miracles, which is the teachings of Jesus. And it's to see the difference between the ego mind and the mind of God or the mind of love. My father was a talking head. Mm. Bless him. He had such serious post-traumatic stress from his childhood and from the war. And he really was like that and he used to blame me for everything. And up until, I'm, t I'm saying up until a few years it took, you know, most of most of the time we had together, my father mm. used to blame me for everything. So if I rang him up and he didn't like what I was talking about, he'd say, Lauren, you pushed my blood pressure up. <laughs> and, and, and I used to accept that as a, as, a, as a child. It was like, yeah, I must be able to do things like that because dad said it all the time. So I must have power, you know, I must mm. do that anyway. I started studying A Course in Miracles. I went through my spiritual awakenings. And one day I said, I'm going to just see dad as this. N not the real dad, that's love. But this is the dad that's going full of fear. Fear because he can't fix me. And you know what that did? I kept saying in my mind, you, you are peace, you are love, you are peace. Well, exactly what Jesus did. But he was on such a high vibration that the minute he looked at you, that was it. You're, you were transformed. You weren't blind anymore because, and not only that, being blind is not just, it's again, it's from the heart, isn't it? You may not be able to see with those eyes, but you, you don't have to have eyes to see. You have to come from inside here. 2020 vision, 2020, we are being uncovered. Everything is being uncovered everywhere. It's perfect. The light is shining, but coming back to my dad. So yeah, so I started doing that. Every time he'd ring me up, I did a course of miracles on it. I said, in my mind, you are peace, you are love, you are peace, you are love. Guess what happened? Whoosh, dad became a friend. It's incredible. He became my friend. He became, I became his carer more. I was the one who was taking care of him because he was in his 90s. We wrote his life story together, Emmanuel. He used to treat me like his secretary. I'd go to Israel to visit him. And he said, right, sit down, do your work. I said, Dad, I'm your daughter. I love you. I didn't come here to work. I came here to, oh, I gave you money to get on the plane because I need you to write my life story. Uh, that was Dad. He, he was just so, you see him in Baba Bertha a lot. 
he is Boba Murphy, you know, that really tough character that she is, like boom, 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 boom. That's my father. Mm. He would sit there like in a like a, a Don Corleone, and he'd say, "You do this, you do this, you do this, Lauren." You, and we all did what he said, and then one day I didn't. <laughs> one day I said, "No, I'm not listening to this rubbish anymore. I love you," and I just sat there. And I looked him in the eye and I kept saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. I said, Dad, I love you, I love you. And, and, and he started eventually, it became a beautiful relationship where he started to trust me and he would ring me up and say, Lauren, you're the only one with a heart. Wow. And it's, it's weird how the conversation has come full circle because when they were doing to Dad, he's amazing. And, all I was was heart. I loved him, and I talked to him, and I sang to him, and I played the accordion, and I, I, and everything, everything I could, to make him feel alive. And I brought him back to life, like Jesus. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that I'm. We all have it, or every single one of us. And I brought him back to life, and it's on you. It's on Facebook. People saw me sitting with Dad, and he was reading a newspaper. This man was lying in bed. Being euthanized, he wouldn't. He, he had no food, nothing. Martin and I turned up, and I said, "No, I'm not having this. Up, you know, up you get. I'm taking you out." And I'm and, and I started healing him with my love. I said, "Dad, you're not going anywhere as long as I'm here. You're eating." He started eating again. He started telling Martin about football. I've got it. It's all on Facebook. This is a man that completely lost his mind. He didn't know who I was. Overnight, he, he thought I'd come to marry him. My own father, I went through hell with that. And then the whole family turned against me because I had a different issue. I came from love and they came from something completely different. And this is the same family now that are laughing at me. The whole thing's come full circle. They don't want to listen. They don't want to listen to what we know. We know that we can get to the level of healing that Jesus did. And we are at that level now. We have absolutely no choice, Manuel, but to be at the level of knowing that Mother Nature and you, your mind, your body, your, the, the balance is what's going to keep you on this planet. We have no choice. And and that, that's what Jesus taught us. And the other thing which... You cannot have attachments, and this is a big one for me, a big one, because when I love, I love like a child. My heart just sort of whooshes open, right? As you know. <laughs> and then the people are people, and they hurt you. And I don't understand it. I don't understand people most of the time. I give and give and give. I, I give my heart and soul, and... And I become like, I do anything for them. I become, sometimes I put myself last and I've had to learn that's not right to do that. And then people are not on that level and they don't understand. They think I'm after something and I'm not. And uh, I find that really hard. But you see, I fall in love with people because of it, also because of attachments, because um, part of me just wants to be part of a family so much. And look, we've created it with Encounters and we've created it in, in a beautiful way where you are all human. We are all human, even though we are Christ consciousness. And if you can't make it or that can't make it or we, we, we accept that. And when the show gets to a show, that's different, I told you. <laughs> the show will go on, even if you, unless you've got, you know, unless you're on, you're literally on, completely on your last name, you know. But you know what I'm talking about here mm -hmm. is you have to, it's all about balance, isn't it? But what I'm saying to you is it sounds like to me with the answer you've given to people and it's just a beautiful, I, I think you should do a regular weekly show on Moving On TV talking about this because people need you. And I will give you the challenges. And I say, someone wow. contacted me today, Emmanuel. Someone contact. I want you to contact us because I will be represent the ego. I will represent the mind and the ego. I I don't want to be like you. 
fully like you. I, I, I think I, I, I want, I, I do have inner peace. I have a lot of inner peace on and off, but there's a part of me that feels like I've got a different journey. I've got to be here for those that can't get to that level yet in order to, to grow with them at the same time. Mm. And, and I think that's something that I'm coming to realize more and more. We all have a different job to do. And I think part of my job is to be the opposite of what you are, to be able to represent what other people are struck, are not able, will not feel like you. They'll pick up a bottle of whiskey. I, I thought about that. I thought, well, if I'm put on the street, I never drink ever. Mm -hmm. For me, it was chocolate, <laughs> food, mm -hmm. not, not chocolate, food. Food filled the void and acting and performing filled the, the void for me. And it could be that what fills the void as well for me is suffering, the body. It could be that that's part of what I've, it's always part of it. I don't know. These are all um, I'm, I'm gonna put it, like identities that we took on, you know? It could be that I need to suffer because I learned it from my mother. You know, she was the biggest sufferer. It didn't matter what you did, she would suffer. She'd always go back to suffering. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying to you is if I got to a situation where they put me on the street, my mind would say, you need to drink a bottle of whiskey, Lauren. Who gives a shit? Just have, you know, just go, 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 down, 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 down. And then some people say, no, you're not going to do that, Lauren, you know better. But, mm -hmm. but what I'm putting to you is what, over the next few months, we, we, you know, over the next few years, I'd say, you're going to get people that are going to say to you, how dare you say that to me? I can't do it. And I've seen it time and time again. I've seen people that you gave it to them on the platter, the therapeutic community where I recovered, they were given everything you're talking about on the platter. They were given, they were reparented, they were loved, they were given structure, they were given food, everything for free for nearly two years and they messed it up and ended up back on drugs and drink and because they didn't do the work. They wouldn't do the work, they wouldn't listen to anybody, they wouldn't, you know, they didn't do the work and I did. People are saying to me, how can you live without medication when everybody else is bombarded with medication? It's because I learned what the truth was. To me, it's love. And every single person is my teacher. And people are going to say, Lauren, you're talking too much. I don't give a shit. I'm talking to teach. I'm talking to teach. And if you don't like it, then go off moving on TV because you're here to learn. And if your life, if you're so happy and you see me talking too much, that means that you are either suffering from not talking enough and you're jealous and something inside you wants to talk or you just don't, you, you just, um, yeah, it's usually something to do with us, everything's something to do with us. So to me, you're given this incredible gift, yeah, and you, you throw it away, they throw it away. I'd say two people that I know, maybe three out of everybody, are still okay after that experience of nearly two years where it was given to you on the platter trust the process you had to give up your life and trust and it's as i say it's all in this book simply amazing i used every second to try and figure out what was going on with me and they hated me they tried to get rid of me ever before four times because as they said i wasn't learning anything and guess who came out and got salvation guess who who came out and is running really on theatre and really on TV and is sitting here at Christmas without anybody and is not scared of a pretend um, Doris, I'll call it, out there when everybody's running around hiding. I've never been scared and I never will be of that. Mm. So from the beginning, I knew exactly what this was. And I put on Facebook, this is your opportunity to heal your body. Go inside. and. Just take vitamins and go into it. I knew. I said it from the beginning in March. And everything I said is, you know. Just so you know, I really do have to go now. It's okay. 9.30. So, but yeah, yeah. I want you to think about that. And I will come at you as the ego with lots of questions. 
that would be fantastic. Now, give me your questions for Manuel because yes, you are on a very high vibration. You are probably, I don't know anybody who's on that vibration as much as you. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have you in my life. I'm honored, uh -huh. not just because of your talents, but because you're a pure heart. And it's very, it's a bit like that song, the pure heart is hard to find. There's not many of them. I don't know very many. I, and your wisdom and the fact that you are in total peace when everybody else is running around either trying to save people like me or trying to figure out what to do. You are in that space. I want you to come on here and without talking religion, without converting people, you know, obviously, like Muslim, Jews, Christians, it doesn't matter. We're all the same. Every, well, I've always said that. We're the same. That thing, whatever it is, is not us. We are the same. We are pure love. And it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, as long as you have a beating, this thing inside you that is called love, we're all the same. But I want you to teach people, what do you do on a daily basis? Like, obviously you need to, to I do halt, so don't get too hungry, too angry, too lonely, or too tired. That comes from the 12 steps. And I nicked it, my teachings of how to stay sane in the crazy world. But I want people, I want to put the questions to you. And so we'll do another one of these. And I will throw it all at you, Manuel. As I said to you, I was put in a situation where my own father thought I was coming to marry him. Can you imagine what that feels oh, like? Oh, my days. My own father was looking at me like a woman. That was just, i never forget it. <clears throat> I went home that night. My father was a good man. You know, nothing. He wasn't like that. I went home. I went back to the hotel with Martin. <clears throat> and I rang my mother-in-law and I said to her, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to deal with it. I really don't. And I cried and I, I let myself feel it. And then I thought, what's more important, Lauren? How much do you love him? And I thought, I love him more than life itself, my lad. And I thought, that's it, I'm going back. And I, and that was it. And I went back to him and I said, Dad, it's me. I'm your daughter. I haven't come to marry you. Martin is my husband. And I showed him the ring. He said, oh, you must stay with him. And, went, and we started to laugh. We used humor. Because it, I swear to God, that was the most painful thing. I, I've never... How can that happen when your own dad overnight doesn't know who you are? And and I'm okay with it. And I and all I did was love him. And that and then I was able to see it from above. And I was able to be around him. And I, do you know what, Manuel? My gratitude to God and to everything was to be able to look after my father, to be able to be there for with, with him for the last few months of his life. To, to celebrate his 95th birthday with him. Do you know what? If he'd been with me, he'd be here now. I have no doubt because I loved him so much. I wouldn't have let him go through anything that he went through. It's all questionable what my father went through. No one tells me. I know what I know. But what I'm saying to you is the gift that any, any gift that a child can get, the biggest gift is to look, to be able to turn the, around the fact, if you had a parent that, it doesn't matter, even if they didn't love you, and I had a very controlling, possessive, lunatic dad who wouldn't let me breathe, and a mother who didn't love me. But the minute you become their parent, you become the elder, you, you just fall in love with life. It was the happiest time of my life, and the best time I ever had with dad was when I was there taking care of him, T talking to him about heaven, talking to him about moving on because he was scared, singing with him, teaching him how to, to, to eat again, teaching him how to, to read, talking to him, playing, acting. Martin, uh, one of our friends came around and we said, look, dad thinks, he thinks he's on the ship, he's back in the army, so do you think you could pretend to be a captain? <laughs> and we went along with it, we did acting. And it was, the, I'd say, the happiest time I ever had with my father wow. was when I, I was able to give him the love that no one else gave him, not one of them, no one, not one of them came 
to his birthday. And so I gave him a card and I wrote every single name on there. So he thought that they, they were there. Wow. I, because I woke up. And I'm different, and that's why I'm running Moving On TV, isn't it? And that's why I've attracted you and Vlad and Luke and, and Martin is, is with us too around this. The people that come into encounters and the people like Cara and Mark and all these beautiful souls that come on Moving On TV, they are very, very special Christ consciousness that see beyond. And we will grow our encounters with more people like that. I don't want anybody else. And that's why they're not here. They're not here yet because they're not ready to be part of what we're building. Mm. Isn't that true? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they, they only stay their real part of the gang, you know? Yeah. And Francis is another one uh, who toured with me everywhere. Who has a very strong oh, belief. I'm in sorry. Him. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go really you have to go now. Thank you so much. I'm going to I want to thank you as well, Lauren. It's been lovely. It's always lovely talking to you. So I'm looking Thanks, forward to yeah. talking to you more. Okay. So every week I want you we'll call I don't know, it doesn't matter, Emmanuel's show, or we it will be ego versus love. Wow. <laughs> Something like that. That'll be amazing. <laughs> or even easier, how to cope in how does they say in this crazy world? How how to cope with everything that's coming at us and Guys, it's going to get harder, and we need to be very strong. I'm already for it, man. <laughs> guys, um, I'll see you on Wednesday on Encounter. Yeah, and guys, thank you so thank much you for up. listening as well. It's nice to have you participate. And yeah, Lauren, I'll see you next time. I'll see you Wednesday. So, yeah. Encounters. Yeah. And if anyone is on here that sings or acts, and they are in this Christ consciousness, we want you in Encounters because you will stick around. <laughs> And that's what we want. We are yes, guys, please do are it. building it. Lots of love. Right. Thank you, Sria. Have a so beautiful, beautiful rest of the evening. Take care. Give love to your mum and dad. I can't wait to meet your parents. What's their you names? Love them. <laughs> What's their names? Miglena and Demetrius. Miglena and Demetrius. You will love them. Oh, I'm sure I would. I'm sure yeah. I would. All I'm right. very grateful that they brought you into the world. You're, you're, Me too. <laughs> it's Manuel, you are a beautiful light. And wow. it's funny because, as I said, you and Vlad and the people that have come to us, very, you're on a different vibration. So I need you on here. And I need you to Thank God that we're me. staying. We're not going anywhere, Laura. And you've been there for me on the phone as well. I know you'll pick me up. Oh, I yes. Know, you're going to have to. <laughs> I know. I know it's coming. Because I'm not there yet. <laughs> Lots of love. Bye, darling. Thank Take you, care. Lauren. Thank Jeez. you. Bye bye. Lots of love. Bye. Right. So it's funny because last time I brought Emmanuel on, I said we brought the light. Emmanuel, do you know what that name means? Emmanuel means God is with us. And God is with us. You have to agree. That is a very, very high vibrational being and uh, or <laughs> light being and we need him we need him more and more so we're going to create a show and it's going to be weekly so join us and hear more of of his wisdom because today i wanted to bring him into a space to show him i i i do not want to stand above anyone and say i'm better than you or that he is better than you and therefore we would survive. I am admitting that I don't think I would. Sorry. I don't think I could survive on the streets with our home in the cold weather in England. I just don't think I could do it. <laughs> so I need to learn as we all do. And so Emmanuel is a good teacher. And Emmanuel, as I said, the, the name is Hebrew means God is with us. Emmanuel is with us, is us. El is God. God is with us. All right. Emmanuel. El. So thank you for joining us. I'm going to get this edited now quickly and get it on as soon as possible. In the meantime, I'm going to put something on for you from last night. Um, and I will, I've got to go and make some dinner because I haven't had anything to eat. Um, so I'm going to put something on for you. Um, to keep you for a little while watching from the videos that we made because I've been 
downloading and creating videos for you um, as much as possible. Let me see, what can I put on for you? What can I put on for you? Talking about my father, I'm just wondering, I did have some videos in, from dad where he spoke about his, his book. Um, I'm wondering whether we should put that on. What comes up? Uh, whatever comes up here, I shall put on for you. I want to put on a, a program <coughs> that will go on for a while because I have to go and make some food. I haven't had a meal today. Uh, except that beautiful salad from Abel and Cole. <laughs>